basically I'm going to I'm part of the uh, Nova School of Science and Technology from Lisbon in Portugal and I'm here presenting a part of my uh, PhD rec research uh, called uh, smartphone based papillometer with chromatic stimuli to screen neuroophthalmological diseases um, I'm going, so these are the, the four main sections that I'm going to pass. It's almost like the paper that I submitted. So in a background uh, to understand what it is. So basically, uh, first we need to know what is pupillometry. So pupillometry is the technique that allows the measurement of pupil response to a stimuli. So this stimuli can be light, music, heat. There's a different kind of stimuli that makes our pupil react, contract and dilate according to it. Um, if we measured it in a quantitative way, we can build some graphic that can give us the, res the pupil response to that stimuli. For, for example, here, um, after a, a flashlight, uh, the pupil will start to contract really, really fast, and it's a, a, a work responsible for the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, and then it will redilate and uh, come back to its baseline size and it's uh, part of the sympathetic uh, autonomic nervous system. Um, and this is the kind of graphics that we then can uh, interpret and uh, analyze this pupil response. There are some parameters that we can check. For example, in this one, in this uh, graphic, we have just uh, some examples, the peak amplitudes, the time that takes to peak, and the time by 75% of pupillary recovery. And are, there are some others that can be um, assessed with this kind of technique. Uh, this technique um, regained a new interest over the last 20 years, more or less, due to the discovery of a novel photopigment, which is called melanopsin. So basically, before uh, the scientists <laughs> and everyone thought that we, the only photoreceptors that we had were the the cones and rods but over 20 years ago they found out that we also have some cells called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells part of the retina that has this new photopigment called melanopsin the, there's a particularity related to this uh, photopigment which is its uh, sensitivity to the blue light so with this discovery over the last 20 years, a lot of research have, has been done using chromatic pupillometry, which means that we are using uh, blue and red uh, stimuli and to understand the pupil response. And to, uh, with, uh, over these last years, uh, several diseases have been tested and studies have been made uh, with this technique and this chromatic pupillometry. For example, Alzheimer, Parkinson, glaucoma, because we know that these diseases has, have dysfunctional sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system balance. And also some studies have shown that, um, for example, in glaucoma, there's a decrease in the number of these kind of cells, the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, and also they get damaged uh, with the disease. So this leads to an impaired pupil light reflex. So basically, that response of the pupil gets differentiated in people with these diseases. So we, this could be a technique to be used to, to screen this kind of diseases. So basically, if we could early screen and monitor uh, diseases like these ones, we can increase the quality of life and decrease the social economical impact of them. Uh, but the existing pupillometers, they are uh, they usually use uh, for record uh, infrared cameras. They are expensive and they are not portable. And the ones that are more portable, they are really expensive. So it's really uh, difficult to bring this technique to a recording system that could be spread all over the world. However, we have technology that could overcome uh, these, which is uh, smartphones. We all have one. so. It allows video recording, it is low cost, it is mobile, and it, it's accessible everywhere, everyone, everywhere in the world that everyone has a smartphone. So um, this could be really a technology to help uh, building this screening tool. So basically the goal here is to prove that it and validate a smartphone-based system that could work as a pupillometer that could enable and use a viable protocol for 
chromatic pupillometry, and in the final stage that could allow um, neuroophthalmological disease screening. So how are we doing that? Uh, first, we need to build <laughs> a smartphone-based uh, system. So we are developing a smartphone app. Uh, in this case, we are using Android and we are using the rear face camera for video recording and the rear face flash for uh, to allow the stimuli in a certain time that we automate. Um, and we are also using some background light um, into different colors, white and red. I will explain further uh, why we made this. Uh, but the, the main goal is to illuminate the eye so that we can have a good quality of the images and to be able to detect uh, what is the pupil and its size in each uh, frame of the video. So this is an example of an apparatus of the measurements for now. It is still in, a, in, in, a, in an early stage, but basically we put the individual in a chin rest uh, like this one so that it can be stable. And we use a tripod to also stabilize the smartphone and to be able to do the acquisitions. In terms of the chromatic uh, stimuli, we are using standard grade cellophane paper as red and blue filters because it's easy to find, it's, it's, it's cheaper for now. And uh, we measured the, the spectres of the flashlight of the smartphone with those filters and it's according to the state of the art for chromatic pupillometry. So we know that these filters are enough for what you are trying to do. Um, this is part of the acquisition system and then we need to work in some algorithms to get uh, the pupil size detected in, in each frame. So basically the procedure is in each frame of the video. Uh, we detect the eye and then we convert it to grayscale and we apply some pupil detection algorithm and we get the pupil detected and the data that we need to build those kind of graphics that show the pupil response through time. Um, this pupillary data processing and the pupil detection, for now we are having a Python algorithm run in a, in a computer after the acquisition. So for now it's not yet in a real time uh, during like right after the acquisition, we are doing it post acquisition and we are using two different uh, pupil detection algorithms that I'm going to explain now. So the first one, is called PURE, uh, comes from Pupil Reconstructor. It was developed by Tiago Santini and other, uh, other authors. Um, it's open source. And in the really summarized way, I'm just trying to explain it like really, really in a high level. <laughs> so we have an input image. First, they do a pre-processing and detect the, the edges. And then they filter those edges to make them thinner and more uh, able to to find uh, pupil candidates they do it through some calculus and they find what they think would be the the pupil edge and then they choose they select the best one according to some criteria such as its roundness the contrast between um the iris and the, so the inner side and the outer side of that edge and and then they get to the final result. And uh, another thing that it's really good in this in this algorithm is that they also calculate a confidence measure, also according to some to some conditions uh, related to roundness and to uh, having other candidates around and so. And they do a measurement uh, between zero and one, being one like the best the best pupil <laughs> and with that we can discard uh, pupils that are not considered good enough to be the, the, the pupil edge. Um, it's also important to, to refer here that this algorithm was built and tested uh, by this group for images acquired with near infrared cameras. So we are doing, we are applying this in a different kind of images because they are acquired in RGB. So this is a, a challenge. So in cases where this confidence measure is low, we are applying a different, um, a different uh, algorithm, a basic one. So it, essentially we do a binarization according to a certain uh, threshold and we apply some morphological applications. We then apply 
a find counters function. We get something like this for this image, for example. We discard all the small ones and all the counters that we know that are not able to be the pupil. And then we apply a meaning closing circle and we get the final result. And this is how we are having uh, the pupil detected in all the frames. Um, and this, the third part of this <laughs> project is the acquisition protocol. So basically, uh, we, we are trying to stimulate those particular cells that I was um, mentioning in the beginning, in the background, those intrinsic photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. So we know that they have a different response for blue light because they are more sensitive, as I said. So the protocol that we are using is represented here. So basically we do some initial adaptation to the light conditions. We then start recording. Um, we record five seconds just to get the baseline size of the pupil. We then uh, show the stimuli for a certain duration. I will explain what durations did we, did we do. Um, and then we wait 30 seconds still recording to uh, be able to get the pupil recovered. And then we stop recording and we do a pause and we repeat the process. Uh, it's every time like this. What were the combinations that we did here? So we did always for red and blue stimuli because we are trying to do a chromatic pupilometry uh, protocol. We also tested different durations, one second, two second, three and 10 seconds of stimuli duration to try to get to, to what we needed and also tested different background colors, so white and red. Um, in order to, we are trying to find a way to, to activate those cells. So this is why we did different testing and we did uh, three times for uh, each scenario. So, okay, um, I think things will be more comprehensible in the results. So first, just to show uh, some examples of the quality of the images that we are getting. So um, these are examples with red and white background lights. And we can see that we have a proper um, contrast between the pupil and the iris. So this is really good. Uh, this is what we want for us to be able to detect the pupil. So here are some examples of the pupil detected through our algorithms. This is just to show that. And now I'm going to show the graphics that we were able to build with the different uh, protocols that we tested, um, always comparing the red and the, in the blue uh, stimuli uh, in the same graph. So, uh, for one second, this is the graph, this, this first, uh, so, sorry, <laughs> uh, the stimulus duration variation we did only with white background because first we were trying to do with the white background light. And this is what we, what we um, the results that we have. So basically one can see that the curves are really similar in terms of the recovery of the pupil. So we are, we are not seeing a, a difference between the red and the blue light uh, pupil light reflex, particularly in the recovery, which is where we know that those cells get uh, their contribution to the pupil light reflex. So, well, this was not what we were expecting. The same thing for the three seconds and the same thing for the 10 seconds. Uh, so we can see that they are almost, the tendency of the curves is the same. and we can see that probably we, we are not being able to activate those cells. Um, so yeah, we see a similarity between the blue and the red curves for all the durations that we tested, even increasing the, the, the stimuli duration was not getting the results that we were expecting. And according to some study that I'm referencing here, uh, this could be um, like a dominance of cones in the pupil light reflex with almost no contribution of rods and melanopsin. So we can, uh, with, this, <laughs> with this protocol, test the cone uh, behavior. Uh, but this is not what we were looking for because we know that we are interested in those particular cells that are uh, more sensitive to the blue light. So we tested with the red background um, and with that, 
we were able we only did it for 10 seconds uh, stimuli and we can see here in the left the, the the graphic for the white background and in the right the graphic for the red background and we can see a small difference between the curves um, and the slower and sustained response for the blue light, which is more likely to, it's more close to what we see in the literature. So, but we only did it with, with three persons, so we need to increase our, our um, sample data. But it can be an indicator of a good way to, to proceed this study. Um, so yeah, this is what I basically have what I've said. Um, so in terms of conclusions, well, we were able to prove and to show that uh, the smartphone has technology sufficient to accomplish a good papillometric results. We see graphics with uh, the same quality of uh, normal and traditional pupillometers. Um, we still need further research and validation for the acquisition protocol to activate those cells um and to differentiate uh, the 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 contribution from codes uh, cones rods and, and uh, the retinal ganglia cells intrinsic, intrinsically photosensitive but we see that probably the red background light can be a way to reach that difference of a response between blue and red stimuli so for for, for future work we want to increase the sampling we want to continue validating this protocol in healthy individuals. And the final stage would be to validate the system in patients with neuroophthalmological diseases so that we can prove that it is possible to have here the screening tool. And just acknowledge the hospital where, I'm, where I've been working and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you very much. For those questions from audience. I have one. What uh, would okay. be the accuracy of a system compared with, uh, yeah, so, with a dedicated syst medical system? Okay, so as you can see, we still have a really low uh, samples, so we need to increase the samples to be able to do a proper statistical comparison we, uh, comparing with the traditional pupillometers. Um, but one thing that it's important to refer once more, I think I referred it, but I'm going to tell it again. Um, the existing pupillometers do things a, a bit different, uh, so they do it in the dark. Um, yes. And they only apply the stimuli there because they are using near infrared cameras. And as we are doing it in light conditions, um, the comparison is a bit different because we are varying a, a big thing. <laughs> so for now, we just want to try to prove that we are able to to affect to to uh, sorry to activate those kind of cells, and then we will be able to compare results. So for now, I cannot give you a proper answer to that because I'm still uh, gathering more more samples to have a statistics to be able to, to compare with them. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Was... Hello, uh, dear colleagues and uh, invited guests. My name is uh, Vidyuborsky Vladimir. I am from uh, Technical University of Moldova and will present I present uh, my uh, work done with uh, cooperation with uh, Medical University of Moldova. Okay, so um, I will uh, report um, uh, kind of progress in uh, my current, uh, our current low um, job. It um, was uh, done for a low power constant current driver for implantable electrostimulator of the lower zephyrgeal sphincter. So, uh, regarding the introduction, actually, the implantable stimulators were was presented in uh, mid 60s of the uh, last century and um, uh, from year to year we uh, see uh, more wide uh, usage of uh, stimulators like uh, cartel pacemaker like uh, neural uh, stimulator and some others uh, 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 from medical point of view one of the novel application of um, implantable stimulation is gastric electrostimulation with direct modulation of the uh, lower sphincter tonus 
and um, exist um, a lot of um, studies that uh, reported a very efficient uh, met method of stimulation um, of the lower esophageal uh, sphincter. Um, in same time, uh, the traditional, like like the traditional stimulators, are relatively um, uh, the big devices, and uh, usually they are using um, uh, some batteries to store it and uh, um, having uh, implantable electrodes. And from uh, this uh, part, also begin some interesting because uh, if you have some foreign body in your uh, uh, organism, organisms begin to react, and this could uh, result by encapsulation and uh, change in impedance. So uh, that's why uh, implantable simulators uh, are usually, usually uses different types of modulation via uh, constant current or constant voltage. And uh, in uh, our work, we will um, describe more constant uh, current power sources because they could adjust uh, their output to uh, change its impedance of electrons, uh, while constant voltage uh, um, so current sources, they are not adjusting their output, so it could uh, result in uh, receiving less energy for stimulation. Uh, so uh, our technical um, schematic was uh, used in prototype of implantable stimulator, and this prototype was successfully tested on uh, laboratory animals uh, during uh, the test. Uh, traditionally, for current uh, current driver, uh, um, constant current driver is used um, like combination of uh, digital to to analog converters. Uh, but um, like it was um, described in many applications, uh, um, but uh, this solution is uh, providing a good um, good output. Um, Characteristics, but has some um, properties like uh, high current uh, consumption, especially in uh, dead period, like for max uh, 57, 057. And uh, but we have found another um, good. Uh, <coughs> We have found uh, one application. It's for uh, the next uh, slide. The now. Sorry, next slide. Oh, oh I, I'm still uh, wanted to, to discuss this slide. So uh, here you you could see uh, schematics of using of a double operational ampli amplifier, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it allows to control the output current. Uh, so uh, on this schematic, actually the output current uh, is controlled by uh, resistance of R9. So uh, we have only like uh, mm, uh, constant current applied, and uh, when we put uh, this driver turning on to a negative or positive um, uh, pike, in any case, we will receive only. Uh, stable output current, and which is uh, also calculated according to provided uh, equation. And uh, this solution has benefits like uh, low uh, general low power consumption, especially of using of um, ultra low power operation amplifiers like OPA two three six nine. But uh, it does not have uh, the flexibility. So, for example, if you need uh, to change the output current, you need uh, all, uh, every time to change um, uh, uh, resistance of the R9. So, uh, next um, uh, was uh, check it another application uh, with a combination of a operational amplifier and digital uh, potentiometer. And uh, like on the next slide. And uh, so in this case, uh, when you are usual, uh, using digital potentiometer, it could be uh, give you more flexibility in a changing of output uh, current. And moreover, 
uh, you could control it uh, digitally with uh, any uh, microcontroller. So uh, here we will move to the uh, next slide. And um, uh, so um, during a literature review was found one application from the Texas inst uh, Instrument regarding um, it was uh, like a verified design of high side voltage to current consumption. One, one second. I'm sorry. So, uh, in this design, uh, what we see? It's, uh, we see uh, double operation amplifiers uh, with uh, additional two more sets for uh, current regulation. And uh, from uh, this application, uh, we have um, possibility to uh, control of output uh, current also with uh, changing of uh, schematics uh, values like presented on, on next slides and uh, moreover for uh, this application uh, is uh, uh, able to uh, make and uh, to provide simulation in a space based uh, software so uh, we could uh, check almost uh, every uh, output parameters depending of uh, mm, system uh, variables and uh, uh, output characteristics like uh, applied uh, impedance. So uh, we could, um, in this um, case, provide uh, very uh, very precise uh, modulation uh, and um, of uh, output characteristics. So, uh, and um, we uh, actually modified uh, this uh, design in order to uh, receive the output uh, diapason in order to zero to 10 millimeters with changing of um, uh, um, of the values of uh, potentiometers, and uh, actually, um, uh, computer uh, simulation uh, confirmed that uh, in uh, range uh, of output um, of uh, not output, uh, then in range of um, electrodes um, impedance from one to two kilo ohms, uh, we always uh, we we have uh, almost the same output uh, current. So the current output current is very stable uh, and it's actually not depending of the impedance of output electrodes. So here you could see the um, actual uh, modulation and simula uh, com computer simulation that we had applied. And uh, on next slide, you will see uh, the schematic that uh, schematic uh, uh, developed in uh, specialized uh, software. It was, in this case, uh, Eagle, uh, Autodesk Eagle. So uh, here we combined the all information uh, from um, existing uh, literature uh, resources. So we used the text instruments uh, application of uh, double uh, operation amplifier and we add a digital potentiometer so we have digital control of uh, output current in uh, this case in a uh, range of uh, impedance from almost from zero to uh, from one to uh, two thousand ohms that sorry, is uh, very... your presentation sorry vladimir we didn't see your presentation now yes so for easy evaluation with this schematic was developed uh, like an um, evaluation model with uh, test points on the left you see the card development uh, pcb on on the right you see the uh, actually assembled model this was only for debugging for real uh, um, prototype it was much smaller like to say five to six um, uh, millimeters uh, of size so, uh, and um, after assembly of elevation model, we have made several tests. So, uh, use it uh, precise load, um, uh, not capacity load, uh, resistance. And we have checked it. So, uh, we provided um, 
we change the, uh, the resistance of the digital potentiometer and measure the output current. And it was very close, uh, very close of uh, uh, of uh, the um, uh, modulation of um, the test. And uh, also uh, very interesting that uh, this circuit has very low uh, consumption current, up to, uh, up to only uh, 18 microamperes, which is, uh, I think, is very good results. And um, uh, on next slide, you see the actual uh, output of uh, during uh, of the oscillograph that was connected to implantable uh, uh, stimulators prototype, and uh, that was used during animal tests. So we just uh, connected um, oscillograph to uh, electrodes and uh, provided um, output current of six milliamperes. So uh we could uh, finally uh, measure it, what is the impedance and the load impedance in a real uh, situation a real animal test is about 266 ohms so it's uh, inside of uh, a lowered uh, range of the output um, impedance and uh, it means that uh, our schematics uh, re really works so uh, discussion uh, a simple space efficient constant current driver with uh, digital control was developed and uh, it could be used in different biomedical applications especially with ultra low power applications like wireless simulators or other users uh, we uh, developed an assembly and evaluation model for easy testing and uh, this schematic was also used during um, uh, Production of prototype of implantable stimulator with uh, confirmed effectiveness uh, that was done during uh, the animal test. Thank you for attention. Thank you. And now the session opens for the question, please. Question. Do you have any question? Uh, may I uh, put uh, one question? As uh, I see, you at first you have done simulation and then you uh, construct this um, model. Is right? Yes. And when we done simulation, we during simulation we determine component we, you have. Uh, Procure and so so we then after simulation we determine what scam we have and what components you need. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, during the stimulation was made uh, uh, not the exact type of components like to say because uh, the existing um, library library of components that uh, could be used it's not so wide. So uh, then uh, I have tried made this simulation. I uh, used some, like to say, general types of op op operation amplifiers and um, some uh, maybe. What you determine from simulation? I have determined that uh, um, for me it was important that uh, when the, uh, the um, impedance, the resistance of the electrodes placing is changing. So in any case, when resistance is changing, the output current will be constant. This is, uh, will be the most uh, important uh, result that I uh, should realize. Because in real life, when uh, some electrodes are installed in uh, organism, the resistance is changing during years. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, to have the same results of stimulation, is reported that uh, resistance, that scheme, your schematic, will react on these cases and will provide less or more uh, um, electricity to have the uh, stable results. So uh, I have realized that uh, in uh, parameters that were selected, it's, it's mm -hmm. really working and it is uh, really uh, working good. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And uh, other question? No? Well, thank you for the presentation. Uh, 
So let's start. Um, first of all, I'm Irina and I'm future bachelor and it's my beginning of my uh, work for this year with my uh, um, supervisor, uh, Mikola Bohomol. So uh, why we picked uh, this topic? Uh, because the study of uh, blood cells uh, is generally one of uh, the main tests uh, for finding uh, correct di diagnosis of uh, the patient or medical research, I mean, in uh, science. Uh, development of uh, technical means, methods, algorithms, software for analysis of the state um, of uh, blood uh, cells erythrocytes based, uh, based on modern optoelectronic and uh, laser technologies uh, provides high efficiently accuracy and uh, non-invasive over-searching. It's very important, especially for us with our uh, pandemic situation because uh, we should have uh, fast analyzing and if it's analyzing non-invasive, we can have it. So. Uh, the improvement of a technical solution for laser diagnostic performance uh, elements of human blood using the method of spectrum interferometry and um, the de uh, development of a method for analy analyze uh, of the obtained speckle um, patterns that we uh, get, it's our main purpose. Uh, some information about uh, speckle interferometry is uh, one of the methods of uh, special um, interferometry uh, and uh, based on the analysis of the uh, granular structure of the imaging of uh, the object. Um, our blood um, have uh, granules, it's our blood cells. So uh, it's an uh, object that we can uh, use uh, with uh, this uh, method. So uh, in this uh, block diagram, uh, you can see the principle of uh, this method. We have uh, our uh, laser L and uh, being from this uh, laser, we focused by uh, lens uh, and uh, direct it uh, to uh, our um, object. Uh, this object can uh, be um, blood in our uh, situation or um, it, uh, this method we can use not only for uh, blood analyzing. Uh, so after um, we, our beam is uh, um, go, uh, going to um, our um, object, uh, uh, here uh, our waves interfere with uh, each other and uh, fall on uh, the uh, second lens. Uh, you can see it here. And uh, after uh, focusing, we uh, can registration uh, our um, patterns on the uh, screen. Uh, so uh, the structure of uh, the as a result of the inten uh, intensity of the uh, distribution of coherent light from a rough surface. Uh, here you can uh, see our speckle um, interferograms or speckle patterns that we got. Uh, from our uh, laboratory stands. Uh, what, is, what it is our laboratory stands? It's uh, helenon uh, lasers because it's, uh, mm, we often use it for blood research. And um, uh, this laser uh, have um, a, you know, a wavelength um, nearby uh, 10628 uh, uh, nanometers. And uh, we use, um, uh, laser with uh, maximum power, uh, it's uh, 45 uh, millivolts. So it's uh, LG38, uh, uh, it's very useful in uh, uh, post-Soviet countries. So uh, due to the fact that um, our laboratory stands involve the um, application of human blood uh, samples uh, in a, a thin uh, layer, 
on the laboratory glass. It's invasive method. Uh, we use a minimum amount of samples. It's, uh, it, it's very good for our uh, <laughs> people that we want research. So speckle uh, parties are recorded um, using a camera as it uh, was uh, behind the uh, screen. Uh, now we should uh, integrate this, uh, our laboratory stand uh, into a device that will be um, uh, used non-invasive analysis. In uh, scientific works uh, devoted um, to uh, microvascular skin imagine, uh, imaging, uh, I uh, admit uh, this uh, works in my uh, article. Uh, speckle patterns are obtained using laser irradiation of uh, human hands. What's the problem of these uh, methods? Um, this method uh, still requires uh, the presence of a quali qualified specialist to implement it because uh, we, uh, when uh, irradiated the hand, uh, we need uh, to consider many factors uh, that associated with uh, movement of uh, our skin uh, behind uh, which um, are the vessels. It's the uh, object of our analy uh, ana analysis. Uh, therefore, the specialist must uh, carefully fix uh, the patient arm. Uh, you can't do it by yourself like patient. It's only a uh, good specialist that can place your hand. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, we propose uh, pick, uh, our finger uh, like uh, object because uh, movement uh, of uh, skin on it, uh, it's um, not so big, and uh, we have a good uh, uh, number of uh, vessels on uh, finger. So, uh, the uh, proposed uh, scheme, it's like uh, the patient placed uh, finger in special hole in uh, the device, uh, whereas this finger uh, irradiated with a laser or a series of laser, uh, but in our general plan, it's uh, not uh, serious, it's uh, helium laser. Uh, to obtain a speckle of the picture, which is fixed uh, by camera, like what's in our laboratory stand that we use for uh, invasive analysis. Uh, after imaging processing, the device procedure results that can be displayed on the screen uh, and sent uh, to the doctor using a single medical uh, network. It's uh, very popular now to use it uh, for now with something new for a lot of European countries, it's normal life. So the structure of the model processing uh, patterns should be like this. We have unit that reading data from uh, yeah, from um, image uh, provides for the uh, formation of uh, an array. Uh, next, we have a unit for uh, converting the original data into other uh, types to read it. A block uh, in which based uh, on the data transformed into uh, the necessary format, um, there is a construction of a graphic representation of data. Like uh, it should be like in uh, Hematology analy analysis, uh, I mean, uh, how it looks like. So, and a block of uh, st uh, statistical transformed uh, data with uh, their subsequent uh, interpretation as an array. Uh, for it, we use uh, MATLAB uh, environment uh, because uh, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, building function in uh, and models um, to read graphic data and uh, it's uh, very popular to use it. So uh, now it's like our structure and uh, we work in realization of it by our uh, previous stand and uh, working with MATLAB. So it presents a laser diagnostic system occupy a leading uh, position among the devices and um, devices used in the medical health. Speckle cephrometry is uh, a method that allows rapid analysis of blood uh, cells by obtaining speckle patterns. And uh, this method allows uh, for a simple analysis procedure, uh, fast results, 
and no need to use additional uh, regions for testing. It's very important because our hospitals uh, like in shock uh, when they heard that they should buy regions, not only analysis. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. And uh, any question, please? Do you have any question? Maybe I have a, a question. And it's interesting, what uh, features, what characteristic of blood you can uh, extract from the, your speckle patterns, or from an analysis uh, of your speckle patterns? Uh, we can uh, analyze the structure of our uh, erythrocytes and uh, get uh, some uh, difference with uh, normal uh, structure and uh, abnormal. And also, uh, if it's... Structure in, uh, of, sorry, structure of cells of the blood? Uh, yes, yes. Mm. And compare with the uh, normal and with uh, from any, uh, any difference, any diseases and so on? Uh, yes, uh, we, are, we should, um, like... Uh, have uh, reference results. It's mm -hmm. our pattern. Uh, we all already got it uh, by invasive uh, uh, laboratory stand, and uh, we combine these results uh, because this um, like speckles or points that we uh, saw on our diagrams. It's uh, like a structure of our cells, and we can combine it. And also, if it's uh, we image uh, blood uh, directly in vessels. Uh, we can um, show how uh, our <laughs> blood uh, is running, and uh, also um, can uh, um, analyze uh, this parameter. I mean, running of blood. How it do not. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, work uh, works um, for uh, coagulometry, but it's already. Uh, we already have this device, so we uh, can't work in this uh, way. Mm. Did you apply your method in any clinic or hospitals? Uh, no, now we can't because it's only in our uh, lab and it's uh, not, uh, we can't do it because it's uh, new for us and we should. Uh, at first, uh, check it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lina. And uh, the um, title of uh, our presentation: the anisotropy of light propagation in biological tissue. This work uh, has been done in the laboratory of uh, materials for photovoltaics and photonics in Institute of Applied Physics of Moldova. This is the uh, content of um, presentation and begin from the motivation of uh, this uh, work. And optical microscopy is the main tool to investigate to observation of biological tissues. And 20, about 20 years uh, ago, the new alternative to the light field uh, optical microscopy, the digital holographic microscopy was appeared and uh, uh, they have uh, some advantages in comparison with conventional microscopy. Among these uh, advantages is numerical refocusing, which uh, allow us to recover the 3D information allow the, about the biological tissue then lensless uh, imaging and so uh, reduce the aberration due to optical components. Then we can extract the physical parameters uh, like uh, index of refraction, transmission, absorption, reflection, and etc. from the 3D uh, image of um, tissue. Then compensation of uh, wave aberrations and chromatic aberrations through numerical or, or numerical means or the recordings, the additional reference uh, face images. 
and we can use the different software to uh, to acquire and uh, to extract information from uh, to processing of the image. And we, uh, in our investigation, we have used the LabVIEW and MATLAB software for the acquiring and uh, processing the images. And of course, the disadvantages are, and main of this, this is reduced image quality due to the laser beam speckle noise and the sensitivity to disturbing environmental conditions. And to overcome of this, um, these disadvantages, at first I, I have said that uh, most biological samples is a transparent for the visual region uh, samples. And so the interesting, the face information about uh, these um, samples, because the face information contains information about the uh, refractive index and uh, thickness and refractive index. And so we can um, analyze the structure of the uh, samples under investigation. And the difference in the face information, uh, as you see, uh, contains the information with the difference of the uh, refractive index of the materials. And the difference of refractive index uh, say us about the uh, the components of the uh, object and uh, the structure of uh, uh, object under investigation. And uh, once more, the um, uh, the light which we uh, illuminate has the some characteristics: a first of them amplitude, phase, and the polarization. And amplitude is not interesting to investigate the biological samples because uh, they uh, didn't absorb the light in the, from the region, uh, uh, region. Then we investigate only the face. But the polarization is, the main, is one of the main characteristics, may um, add the, any information about the samples. And so in, uh, we propose the use the polarization of the light which illuminates the sample under investigation. And polarization represents uh, uh, the direction of uh, oscillating electrical field of light. The polarization may be in different, uh, may li lie in different uh, um, surface. For example, maybe linear, in, uh, linear polarization in vertical and horizontal uh, surface, and maybe circular polarization. And during, during uh, the passing the light through the samples, this polarization may be changed, and so we can analyze uh, the structure with change, changes of the uh, direction of uh, polarization. And uh, one of the characteristic which uh, uh, we can extract, this is anisotropy, optical anisotropy of uh, samples, which uh, influence or reflect the local order of uh, the structures. This is maybe the collective rotation of atomic bonding the overall alignment of molecular axis within the object and etc and uh, the characteristic of the, this uh, anisotropy is the birefringence and the birefringence gives the materials two um, different refractive indices along two characteristic directions of the um, during uh, intrinsic the materials and this is a parallel a perpendicular perpendicular direction which uh, uh, influence on the light uh, passing through the sample. And from this, we can uh, see that difference in the phase distribution, uh, uh, the light consists of or determined, determined by the difference in the refractive index of, um, of the materials. And this refractive index in turn uh, uh, is determined by the difference between these two uh, refractive index uh, uh, in, uh, inside of these two, two directions, parallel and perpendicular direction of, of the materials. And this is uh, our, uh, our digital holographic microscope. This is a phase shifting microscope, which uh, uh, is a Mach tender cam in, uh, in object wave introduced in the, the, the sample. 
and the microscope objective in the both uh, arms of this microscope we introduced to magnify it and to can change the magnification uh, in the uh, suitable for the object under investigation. And the set of um, half wave plates can uh, can control the uh, polarization which we have in the reference and in the object beam separately. And then we have used the liquid crystal uh, variable retarder to uh, to f to do phase shifting in this microscope only by the uh, delivering of the uh, electrical signal. So without any moving mechanical part, and uh, so this um, uh, this uh, uh, high, uh, high higher the stable of the uh, this scam at first. And then uh, the accuracy of the phase shift, which we put on the reference beam. And this is the scam of uh, our microscope. And I have said that the, all of the components uh, were, were mounted on the cage system. And this um, rigid, this do the rigid our microscope at first. And then uh, the same, they reduce the vibration and the higher the uh, accuracy of uh, images which we obtain. And uh, this uh, apl uh, application of the, our microscope, at, at first the study of the uh, cancel. Uh, and uh, the cancel blood, uh, hemo hemoplast, the cancel cell of hemoplast. And at first, we uh, examine the ob ob observe uh, our sample under uh, white uh, light microscope to to do the any scan of the of the sample, and uh, then to adjust the magnification, which can um, can uh, in which we can see the any features of this uh, of these samples. Uh, you can see on the. On the left um, image, we can see any any features of the sample, and on the uh, light for more magnification, we can. And then at this magnification, in this um, example, this is a sixty magnification. We obtain the unwrapped face map and the vertical uh, polarization. Then obtain on the horizontal pol uh, polarization, and. After that, we uh, we do the difference between these two polarization, and this dis difference reflects the difference in the refractive index in the vertical and horizontal polarization, which we uh, access the uh, um, anisotropy in these materials. And from this, we can see that only uh, um, only dark uh, cells of uh, this. Uh, this material have the uh, anisotropy, not all all the cells of these uh, materials. This is a difference between these cells which we can see from this investigation. And then we applied for the pollen cells uh, our uh, microscope, and the same as at the eight magnification and twenty magnification, and we can see that only twenty uh, magnif magnification is enough to see the any uh, peculiarities of these materials. And uh, the same, unwrap face map and vertical polarization, then at horizontal polar polarization. And uh, uh, this is 2D and 3D presentation of this. From this, we, uh, we do the difference between these two uh, polarization. And from this difference, we see that not uh, all the um, materials of this sample has the, any anisotropy. Only the membranes between the cells has uh, the uh, anisotropy. And then uh, the head tissue. The head tissue, uh, this is the muscle of head tissue. The, uh, we can um, study at enough the eight magnification because this is a um, Great, uh, great difference. This is a filament, uh, as you see. And so from this, we obtain um, 
different uh, um, a different phase map, but at different magnification. At first, at the eight magnification, and then in the nineteen magnification, and we can see that all uh, anisotropy is a very less in this uh, question. But from the nineteen magnification, we can uh, realize the, which, uh, which which structure we can uh, we have seen on these uh, samples. And then conclusion of uh, our work the. We presented the polarization sensitive phase shifting digital holographic microscope, and uh, which acquires phase shifting holograms at two orthogonal uh, vertical and um, horizontal polarizations. And uh, this system was uh, upgraded by liquid crystal variable retarder to perform phase shift in the reference beam. And the polarization dependent hologram are recorded by rotating the half wave plate. And this difference reflects the polarization dependent refractive index associated to the anisotropy of biological tissue under study. And the proposed method uh, was uh, applied to the uh, cancer cells, hemoplast, the pollen cells, and the heart tissue. And the results show that the polarization sensitivity exists in the cancer cells hemoplast tissue and the pollen cells itself are not the anisotropic, but their membranes are birefringent. And any noticeable anisotropy in the heart tissue was not watched. And we consider that this result will provide reference for the future clinic diagnostics and pathological uh, research. So thank you for I repeat, my name is Teodor Lucian Grigori. I'm a professor in uh, Military Technical Academy Ferdinand, uh, Ferdinand I in, in uh, Bucharest. Uh, and I will present uh, my papers, my paper, MEMS INS GPS positioning device for uh, urban life mobility uh, improvement. Uh, actually, we will see the results from an internal project of the Military Technical Academy, a part of the, the results uh, obtained in, in, uh, in this project. Okay, so uh, that's the title of the presentation. My colleagues who participated at uh, this uh, project. Uh, so you, you can see the summary of the presentation. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. So uh, you will see the, the project contest, the data fusion mechanism based on uh, adaptive neurophase inference system algorithm. We, we will have a, a data fusion between uh, an inertial navigation system and the global positioning uh, system. Also, uh, you can see the experimental setup for the data collection. The algorithm evaluation with experimental data and the uh, conclusions of the of the paper. Uh, the project contest uh, context is related to the the improving of uh, the access of people with disabilities and of elderly to all aspects of uh, urban uh, life. Uh, uh, anyone uh, know that? Uh, we have uh, several PC, Android, and iOS mobile mobile applications for smartphones, which uh, try to help the the people to live better uh, lives by offering traveling guidance or uh, information related to different accessibility uh, accessibility accessibility issues available in certain uh, cities or uh states of the world what uh, we know that uh, we know that uh, all these uh, guidance applications uh, use geographic data and positioning signals from the gps uh, once we use the the gps uh, signals to to uh, uh, have a position of this kind of uh, people uh, we have some problems because uh, all all these applications uh, are used in the urban environment 
where the GPS is uh, negatively influenced by many factors like uh, multiple paths, interferences, uh, and uh, signal blockage due to the uh, artificial obstacles, uh, buildings, and uh, uh, another uh, another uh, obstacles. Uh, it, it is clear that with the, the permanently enlargement of the application domain uh, of the global positioning uh, system, increase the needs to have uh, fully operational and accurate positioning and navigation systems. Even in the in, in such uh, areas uh, where the GPS signals are lost due to the wrong communication with the satellite, satellites, for example. Uh, for example, uh, to uh, overcome this uh, negative uh, uh, aspects uh, related to the GPS functioning, uh, for many applications were developed integrated navigation uh, systems, which supposed to bring near the GPS another positioning another navigation uh, system. So the GPS become to be assisted by other navigation uh, systems, such as inertial navigation uh, system. Uh, the advantage of the INS coming near the, the, which come near the GPS, it's the complementarity uh, uh, of the of uh, its characteristics uh, to GPS, uh, so uh, from from this point of view, INS was uh, adopted as the main player on the integrated navigation uh, system systems market near the GPS. Uh, our group is uh, coming from the aviation uh, domain, so uh, we use it intensively. Uh, this kind of uh, data fusion between INS and uh, and GPS and the idea of the of the project to, to the idea to bring the, the the results of data fusion between INS and and uh, INS and GPS in the in the field of uh, elderly uh, people uh, um, coming from our expertise related to 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 this kind of uh, problems with the GPS also in navigation. When we navigate, for example, in, uh, in the uh, mountain area where we have uh, problems with the uh, GPS signals. Uh, so we, uh, we uh, bring our expertise in, in this area based on the same uh, uh, motivation like in aviation, uh, like in aviation uh, applications. Uh, so, uh, because uh, we can lose the, the GPS uh, signals in uh, different uh, areas in, uh, inside the cities, uh, we can uh, use the INS to overcome the non-availability of GPS signals. But unfortunately, for a short time, because the, the inertial sensors, the inertial sensors which uh, uh, equipping the inertial measurement unit of the INS uh, has a lot of, uh, of errors, especially uh, when we uh, go to the MEMS, uh, uh, kind of uh, of sensors in in the uh, with with uh, a high degree of uh, miniaturization. So uh, we try to to do something else to overcome also this kind of errors uh, coming from the men's uh, sensors. And the idea was to to bring an adaptive neurofuzzy inference system which learn the behavior of the navigator when we have uh, uh, full data from the GPS. Uh, in order to use this, uh, this already learned uh, lesson, 
to navigate when the GPS uh, becomes uh, unavailable. So, uh, we propose here an everyday life instrument for people with visible and inv in invisible disabilities and for persons with uh, reduced uh, mobility to ease their access to all aspects of uh, urban life, like their workplace, but also parks and stores, public spaces, or uh, uh, transports. Uh, the developed instrument will have more complex applicability, not only for travel, but also for everyday uh, life. Uh, like I, uh, I, as I already uh, told you, our instruments include the include the include this uh, MEMS INS MEMS Inertial Navigation Systems system and the Global Positioning uh, System, uh, both fused based on adaptive neurofuzzy inference uh, system, integrated as is uh, the the. Uh, usual uh, mechanism by using a Kalman filter. In this paper, you, you will see the results obtained during the evaluation with experimental data of our proposed uh, position in the positioning uh, mechanism. Shown are the data fusion mechanism based ANFIS algorithm, the experimental setup for the data collection, but also the algorithm evaluation with uh, experimental uh, data. Uh, the data fusion mechanism based uh, adaptive, adaptive neurofuzzy inference uh, system is based on a Kalman filter and on, and on the complex fuzzy inference uh, system, we'll see that uh, we have six fuzzy inference, uh, inference systems uh, included in the, in the ANFIS. Uh, the, the mechanism uh, the integration mechanism supposes uh, actually two uh, navigation phases, the training phase and the prediction uh, phase. Uh, in the, in the uh, figure, you can see the training uh, phase of the proposed uh, mechanism of the synergic navigator. Uh, we have here the, the inertial measurement unit, which uh, contains uh, six sensors, three actuometers, uh, and three gyros to uh, uh, monitor the, um, the, the, the translation and rotation uh, movement. Here we have the inertial navigation systems, systems a system which uh, receives uh, data from the uh, EMU, the GPS system, the classical integration data fusion uh, system based on Kalman filter. And here we can see the uh, adaptive neurofuzzy inference system, which is trained based on 10 inputs and uh, six outputs. The outputs will be the uh, speeds of the vehicle in the northeast and down uh, directions, but also the position in terms of latitude, longitude, and uh, altitude uh, obtained with the navigation uh, system. Um, so here is the, the training uh, regime. We can see that uh, the system uh, have a, a valid uh, GPS. So we have uh, during the training access to the, the GPS uh, data. In the ANFIS, uh, adaptive neurofuzzy inference system will have six uh, independent fuzzy inference system. Uh, one per channel, three uh, speed channels and another three position uh, channels. Uh, so we have 10 inputs and uh, six outputs. Uh, the amphis is trained during the proper functioning of uh, GPS, like I already uh, told you, and works together, attention with INS in the prediction phase on short periods when the GPS signal is lost. Here, we can see the operation, uh, the operating principle for the uh, uh, mechanism when the GPS signal is lost. So the corrections, 
provided by the already trained uh, adaptive neurofuzzy inference system, it's com uh, are combined with the estimates of the navigation solution errors provided by the Kalman filter. And after that, we'll have at the output the synergic navigation uh, solution. So this is the second phase, the prediction phase of the proposed synergic navigator. Uh, here you can see the, the few, few pictures with the preparation of the uh, experimental setup, uh, but also with the collection of uh, data. So the, the hardware structure, including the inertial uh, detection uh, unit, was boarded on a car to collect more data in order to train the neuro uh, fuzzy uh, inference uh, system. Here we can see uh, the positioning of the uh, boarding vehicle uh, during the collect uh, uh, during the, the uh, phase of collecting data to train the um, ANFIS. We're made a lot of uh, tests. We collect a lot of data in a specific area. Uh, before uh, the fusion of the data, of the GPS and INS data, in order to train the, the adaptive uh, fuzz inference system, we need to, uh, to have the same uh, rate for the data. Uh, for the INS data, we acquired uh, the data with the sample rate one uh, with 100 sample per second, while the GPS receiver provide, provided data once per second. So this is the data of the INS. Here with the green, we can see the data obtained for GPS. So we need to estimate the data, the, the lost data, to have the same rate of both systems. So uh, before uh, put together the INS and GPS data, we used another uh, adaptive neurofuzzy inference system playing the role of an extrapolator to have the same uh, sample rate for, for both uh, systems. The structure is uh, uh, this one. After a significant number of experimental data were acquired, we we starting to train the uh, adaptive neurofuzzy inference uh, system. We have here the training structure for uh, each uh, piece fuzzy inference system. So we have ten inputs and one input having, I repeat, six channels, three speed three speeds and three uh, position. Here you can see an example of the, the data acquired from the inertial uh, sensors. You can see a lot of noise on the, on the sensors because the sensors is uh, MEMS sensors with low performances. The evaluation of the system was made in three different scenarios. Open sky detection when we have full time available GPS, intermittent GPS signal, and uh, the, the best scenarios, the blockage of GPS signal when work, working just the inertial uh, positioning. Here is the software used to uh, design, to train our proposed mechanism. In the upper part, we can see the, the algorithm, the, the inertial navigation system algorithm with the inputs from the inertial sensors. Here is the data collected from the global positioning system. Here we have the Kalman uh, filter used in navigation, the six fuzzy inference systems, and also the uh, corrections and the output uh, data, the output 
the, the synergic data obtained at the output of the navigation uh, system. When the GPS signal is available, the integrated system works based on the signals received from the Kalman filtering algorithm. When the GPS signal is lost, it switches to the configuration INS, trend, and FIS in the prediction, in the second phase, the, the prediction uh, phase. In the second situation, when the GPS signal is lost, the INS signals are fused with the previously, previously trained NFIS data. Uh, also, as I told you, we have here six uh, fuzzy inference systems, six independent fuzzy inference systems, uh, which uh, provide us the informations uh, lega uh, related to the positions, the three uh, positions, latitude, longitude, and altitude, and uh, three speeds in northeast down reference uh, frame. You can see here the uh, rules uh, after the fuzz inference uh, system training for latitude channel. We can see in the uh, in, in the second uh, uh, graphic in the second picture the evolution of the uh, training error during the training epochs. Also, uh, we can we can observe the, the latitude the deviation uh, for trained fees uh, in different uh, for different uh, epochs. The same thing we can uh, can be observed for longitude channel. We observed that the, the training error uh, decreased, and also that the deviation it's very very uh, small between the used data and the trained uh, model. The altitude channel, the north speed channel. East speed channel and also the vertical speed uh, channel. After we trained the adaptive neurofuzzy inference uh, system, we made some simulations related to the evaluation of, or, or, uh, of uh, absolute mean deviations between the data and the fuzzy inference uh, systems models. And you can see here the values obtained for different uh, uh, stages of training, untrained after uh, uh, 50 epochs and uh, so on. Also, uh, we can see here the vehicle position evaluation when the GPS signal is available. Attention, raw data were used for INS solution evaluation. So we don't filter it, uh, the uh, EMU data, the inertial measurement unit uh, data before the uh, be, before the, the fusion. So we we can observe here the INS provided position with the blue, with the red the GPS position, and also with the dotted green we have the integrated uh, system, the synergic uh, navigator solution. We can see what's happened if we use just INS. The error, the deviation uh, is due to the uh, big errors of the uh, inertial measurement uh, sensors. So the, the because of raw data. The same thing is in the latitude, longitude, but also in the altitude channel. Here, we have an evaluation of our system. You see GPS and ANFIS data, which working until, until the uh, eight, 80 seconds, so until here, we have available GPS. And starting from this point, 
we made data fusion between INS and already trained already trained ANFIS. Actually, we cutted here the GPS signal in the integration scheme when we made the simulation. So we, we put bad signals here and we have a switching between the uh, normal functioning and uh, the, sig the, the second phase, the estimation uh, uh, and the estimation, uh, the prediction uh, stage. We have the GPS data recorded, but we use it just as reference. So in the, in the graphics, we have starting from the 80 second, the GPS signal just as reference. The, the GPS data after this moment uh, are not used in the estimation of the position or of the speed. The results is presented for latitude channel, longitude channel, altitude, and also on the three channels of speed. We can see that we have noise uh, values of the positions, but also noisy values of the speeds, but the uh, synergic uh, solution provided by our system without GPS is near the solution of GPS. So the, the, the system uh, working uh, good. I repeat, we use the GPS until this moment just to have a reference. And the system, uh, the system works good. The, the noise presented in the uh, final solution is due to the, fact, to the fact that the adaptive neurophasic inference system uh, was trained based, based on uh, inertial measurement unit uh, data, uh, which is provided by the accelerometers and by the gyros, which is very noisy. I repeat, is raw data with no filter. The conclusion, the conclusions is, are, are that a MEMS INS GPS positioning device for urban life mobility improvement was proposed. The smart Amphis data fusion algorithm is used for the navigation solution error prediction when the GPS signals are unavailable. We include in the ANFIS the six, fuzzy uh, six independent fuzzy inference systems, each one for the three position channels and three, position, three uh, speed uh, channels. All the tests regarding the car position used in the, in the uh, data collecting were monitored in real time and marked on a map. In the data post-processing stage, it was tested various situations for the GPS signal uh, losing. In all situations, in all simulated situation, situations with experimental data has been observed that the navigation uh, solution with the synergy with the integrated navigator in the prediction mode, in the second mode, follow the reference data, even if the GPS signal was lost. The noisy responses obtained after the GPS signal uh, was lost were due to the physics training based on the inertial sensors output outputs, so based on the noisy signals. And the final conclusion, the proposed instruments works very well for short time, few minutes with no GPS signal, and it, it is suitable to be implemented in various applications for urban life mobility improvement 
when the GPS signal may be lost or altered due to the blockage, multipath, or interference. We use the uh, uh, all uh, all channels, even uh, in the monitoring of the elderly people. We don't need the altitude because the the training is uh, the 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 adaptive neurophasy inference system uh, training. Uh, offers good results uh, when we use the, the, the altitude channels. And we have the possibility to have data both from INS, but also both from, INS, from uh, GPS part for all channels. So that's the reason for, for what we used the, uh, also the altitude uh, channel and also the vertical speed uh, channel in the training, but also in the uh, validation uh, step of the proposed uh, of the proposed uh, mechanism. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, if you uh, have some questions, please. Thank you. Uh, questions, please. No question. Well, thank you once more for the, your presentation. I want to make uh, some uh, report about, uh, let's say, its small successful story, which uh, done with our industrial partner uh, company in Kram from Moscow which are focused uh, on uh, production, uh, especially devices for ammonia detection for industrial safety application. And uh, they just try, sometimes ago, try to enlarge the market, uh, uh, shift to um, uh, medical application. And now I want to present uh, uh, conception of device which are uh, we development together with uh, Incram company. Uh, our motivation uh, uh, were uh, uh, to make uh, easily uh, uh, easily instrumentation for uh, respiratory breath test for diagnosis uh, rapid diagnosis of uh, Helicobacteri infection. Uh, it's uh, this is infection uh, the first um, first call uh, before the cancer of stomach. And uh, typically, uh, it's it's very, now it's it's very developed uh, uh, topic uh, in uh, medical applications. And uh, now. Uh, uh, medical instrumentations uh, have a lot of instruments uh, for Hillary bacteria pillar infection detection as invasive and non-invasive. Uh, typically, uh, invasive uh, detection connection with uh, uh, taking some uh, probe from uh, uh, from uh, stomach and uh, material for biopsy and uh, searching the infection. Uh, typically non-invasive uh, diagnostic uh, connection with a specific uh, uh, breath uh, say, tests, which are based on uh, 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 fast urea test, uh, urea which uh, marketed by specific isotopes of uh, uh, carbon. Uh, this isotopes is something uh, 13 uh, uh, isotopes of uh, carbon uh, typically content one percent in uh, nature and this is uh, like say it's for enlarge the concentration of such isotope and urea uh, typically using uh, some instrumentation uh, something laser dividing of isotopes and some some dividing columns and uh, typically this is uh, urea is uh, artificial uh, made urea which uh, 
uh, not present in uh, nature. Typical uh, uh, test uh, starts from uh, drinking the solution of urea, uh, which uh, comes in uh, uh, comes in stomach, uh, react with uh, Hillary bacteria, pillory, uh, bacteria, and uh, reproducing uh, from uh, uh, lung. Uh, carbon dioxide containing uh, the uh, specific isotope with, uh, which uh, detected uh, by infrared spectroscopy, by optical uh, instruments. From uh, another uh, uh, way of to make chemical reaction, urea with uh, pillory, bacteria pillory, uh, producing the ammonia. And our motivation uh, they were, uh, in using this product, ammonia, uh, and uh, uh, non typical, uh, like say, and uh, uh, typical urea, which not contain uh, specific isotopes. We are try to use, uh, uh, like say, in our work, don't use the uh, specific uh, instrumentation, only instrumentation which are uh, possible to find on wide uh, market. Okay. Uh, we developed a uh, HP infection detector architecture, uh, which uh, based on uh, idea, uh, which uh, in have uh, high sensitive uh, sensors uh, to uh, ammonia and in other cases, which I show in the uh, future, and a uh, high selectivity filter. It's this, this is idea is uh, relativity in other, which are uh, located uh, on uh, a commercial market. Typically, in such tests, uh, tried to use uh, electrochemical sensors with a uh, high uh, selectivity. Uh, but these uh, sensors are not uh, stable in, uh, in, in, in long time because it's, like, it's working like a battery. And uh, in our, by our like, say, information, such sensors lifetime for uh, sensitivity range for typical detection of, of HP infection is something half a year. And here we are our motivation to uh, using uh, solid state uh, sensors, which are stable parameters. Here are the present uh, the view of uh, prototype of device, which uh, contain electronic blocks, sensors, tank for uh, storage exist uh, cases, which uh, uh, produce the uh, patient. Uh, here there are some uh, block uh, scheme of our device and uh, sensitivity to ammonia of our field effect sensors. Uh, typically, uh, sensors have a high sensitivity to ammonia, uh, to ammonia uh, which are uh, located in uh, uh, sub-PPM uh, range. Here, yeah, present uh, structure of field effect gas sensors, which are developed in our uh, lab. Uh, sensors is, uh, like I said, it's relativity simple. It's, uh, uh, it's standard uh, capaci capacitors uh, based on an uh, N-type uh, silicon uh, substrate with thickness uh, half of millimeter. Uh, with uh, the electric uh, layer, typically it's a CO2, which located in a uh, range of 100 nanometers, uh, and uh, some additional uh, uh, the electric uh, layer, uh, which uh, gives the uh, best adhesion to of uh, palladium to CO2, and uh, palladium electrode. Uh, which uh, have diameter two three millimeters. It uh, depends of uh, uh, 
stable, then CT may open uh, sensors. Here, the present the photo. Also, for increasing the uh, increasing the uh, speed of uh, sensor response, we are using uh, pre-heating uh, of structure up to 120 uh, degree. Here present a scheme of uh, uh, fully assembled sensor in T8 uh, uh, steel glass uh, package. Typically here structure, here uh, thermistors, which are show the working temperature under the sensor located the uh, uh, haters uh, uh, which are uh, heat system uh, under 120 degrees here yeah, present typical uh, characteristic uh, of uh, sensor response based on uh, capacity voltage dependence uh, mm -hmm. which are uh, produced uh, which are managed by uh, area of uh, 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 spacing charges, which are created by uh, diffusion of uh, gas in uh, inter interface of uh, palladium electrode and uh, CO2 uh, dielectric uh, layer. Creating some uh, space charge, which are shift characteristic. Shifting of characteristic are produce the our uh, uh, response uh, structure. Uh, if size uh, four to four millimeter, or just a simple silicon chip, uh, uh, produced uh, by uh, uh, by pulse laser deposition. Uh, on a vacuum uh, laser machine, uh, which are tuned to special regime, uh, which uh, gives a uh, uh, gate, uh, palladium gate, with a high, uh, 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 high porous. Here, the present uh, uh, same photo, uh, same photo from top, and uh, uh, same photo which uh, made by uh, focus it on beam that show that characteristic of uh, interborder layer uh, that uh, that layer is especially uh, need for increase the uh, time of response because uh, diffusion in a solid body it's one of uh, say it's one a specific uh, delay of response for type of for which type this is type of sensors. Uh, here are the present some experimental setups which are uh, we're using for calibration, uh, which contain uh, a gas uh, mixture uh, generator, uh, which. Uh, Using special uh, tubes uh, uh, contained ammonia for creation of uh, sub uh, PPM uh, concentration of ammonia and also in other gases, uh, interfering gases, which are you uh, we are using in our experiment. Okay, also we are using some electronics boards for data acquisition, and so uh, here that's uh, present a sensor which are. Uh, located and stream of uh, target gases. What uh, we may say about experiment about stability of our structure. Uh, first, uh, sensitivity. In the uh, right uh, corner, present uh, uh, response of uh, sensors uh, to different uh, type of gases. We are using uh, two type of uh, gases. It's uh, nitrogen contained gases and uh, sulfur contained gases. It's possible to see that uh, uh, sulfur uh, sulfur contained gases uh, response as uh, much uh, higher than uh, nitrogen uh, contained gases. Uh, sometimes in order. 
And also sensors uh, have very nice response uh, to hydrogen. That's uh, 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 very urgent uh, for us uh, uh, because um, we want uh, to have uh, sensors uh, which are uh, sensitive to all uh, inorganic gases uh, which uh, may produce the human body. Also, uh, if we are talking about uh, stability, here the present uh, uh, serial measuring in uh, uh, say in a low humid atmosphere in uh, a laboratory room uh, by days and days, and possible to see that uh, fluctuation of uh, uh, capacity it's near the ten picofarads. That means uh, 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 signals, interfering signals located in this area uh, that uh, 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 that possible to uh, tell that uh, for nitrogen that like say uh, interfering signal it's uh, something low than uh, 100 ppb. It's, uh, it's a typical uh, typical like say uh, fluctuation error. Also, uh, sensors are uh, uh, sensitive uh, to humidity, but this is a sensitivity is uh, uh, additive, which possible if you're using uh, uh, humidity sensors, you may tune you tuning the error of uh, sensor and predict the uh, behavior of sensors. Also. Uh, sensor working uh, under uh, well, let's say relativity low temperature around 120-140 degrees. That means uh, sensor uh, didn't uh, produce uh, uh, interfering gases uh, by chemical reactions. Because typical reactions of uh, sensors. Uh, we know it's from a field of uh, metal oxide sensor stars from 200 degrees. We uh, especially to reduce temperature uh, for excluding uh, the uh, producing uh, the in interfering gases. Also, uh, very, very interesting that uh, such type of sensors and such temperatures is uh, insensitive to uh, work organic cases, which uh, produce in uh, big volume by bodies. And uh, next uh, step, uh, the, the uh, construction of a selective uh, uh, pneumatic uh, scheme of uh, device. Here present uh, for uh, for stage of working uh, uh, developed device. First stage is just uh, uh, exhaust gas uh, uh, sample which took from uh, patients, uh, goes to tank and collect in uh, tank. All valve is closed and just collecting. Uh, second uh, stage is just uh, close the input value and Started pumping cases uh, through the valve and coming back to uh, tank through the uh, sensors chambers. It's first measurement, which starts, which are um, working uh, four or five minutes. After five five minutes, uh, uh, valve uh, free is closed and. Uh, Sampling gas sampling start goes through the filter, uh, which are uh, selectivity reduced concentration of ammonia, just absorb only ammonia, and goes to uh, through the tank. After the next five minutes, uh, concentrations of uh, ammonia disappear from uh, gas sampling, and you are. Uh, obtain the differential signal between 
input samples and output samples without uh, containing of ammonia. That means you are obtaining, uh, like say, clean signal from ammonia concentration on the background of another gases which uh, contain uh, uh, human ex exist. Uh, okay, that uh, device contains some uh, software for uh, patient data acquisition. Uh, here we present some uh, some uh, screenshot of these uh, systems, and uh, the last uh, slide is a result of HP infection diagnostic and comparison uh, with. Uh, in our uh, test uh, with uh, rapid uh, urea test and cytological screening test. And our uh, last column, it's our, our uh, self-development devices and uh, possible uh, to see that uh, for some uh, disease, uh, mainly 90% of uh, screening gives uh, the positive signal uh, but uh, some diseases uh, gives uh, uh, negative signal, but uh, we are um, uh, thinking that that connection with uh, specific, uh, spe specific of uh, patient and specific of concentration hillary bacteri pylori in uh, stomach. Uh, typically, uh, our device working Actually, the same on the same <coughs> the same to tolerance like a, a rapid uh, urea test. That's uh, say that's our story about uh, developing of HP infection uh, diagnosis device uh, based on uh, uh, solid state semiconductor uh, sensors. Also, it's possible scheme to using uh, in another uh, in our diseases which uh, which are uh, which are possible to detect by uh, breath test. Also, this is scheme uh, possible to use it for uh, in in uh, diseases which connecting with. Uh, uh, then, then, then this, 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 uh, because uh, sulfur contained uh, uh, gases, it's a signal which are uh, which are uh, yeah, patients have problem with uh, teeth uh, and uh, just changing of uh, filter in uh, such device uh, possible to uh, actually to apply this. Uh, uh, Diagnostic uh, uh, gas analyzer for in our diseases. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have questions? Thank you for your presentation. Questions from the audience? I have uh, little questions. Are there similar equipment on the market? Uh, not. Uh, the, uh, I just especially don't show the uh, uh, devices because need some permission from, uh, let's say, from these devices and uh, some critics. Uh, typically, on market uh, located such a system uh, which contained uh, uh, electrochemical sensors. Electro Next question: Why, uh, why is system better than others? Uh, by by why? Uh, why? Uh, uh, don't uh, content uh, uh, don't need using the specific isotope uh, uh, content of uh, urea and also yeah. solid state uh, devices uh, which are very very stable with long time because it's uh, working in uh, diffusion mode and uh, not chemical uh, reaction and uh, Typically, such sensors working up to 15 years. It's, it's impossible to compare, to compare with uh, electrochemical sensors which working 
in better in two, three years, it's sensor for ammonia. Uh, real uh, sensors uh, sensi uh, in a sub PPM range, uh, real sensors, electrochemical working in uh, regime that need for HP infection detection, just a half of year. And okay, thank you. It's, thank you very much. Thank I, you very much. I want to add, add the main, uh, also main idea, which are asking us uh, in the hospitals, because when you put ne you put uh, the new sensors, when you replace your sensor, you need new calibration by ammonia. That's a little bit problem for hospitals. They, yes. They want to exclude this operation. Okay. Thank you for the presentation. In vitro analysis of uh, enamel surfaces with uh, scanning uh, electron microscope after orthodontic stripping reduction using various instruments. Um, uh, interproximal enamel reduction, uh, also called stripping, is a, a method uh, uh, frequently used uh, uh, in orthodontic treatments. Uh, according to um, um, the therapeutic indications uh, for uh, dental crowding and morphology issues. And the main goal of uh, this study is uh, an in vitro evaluation of uh, enamel surfaces reduced by uh, uh, different stripping techniques, uh, manual, mechanical, and uh, laser methods. And uh, uh, a systematic uh, morphology analysis performed by an SEM uh, uh, analysis. The materials and uh, method, methods uh, used in uh, uh, this work um, the first group were uh, surfaces uh, reduced with uh, uh, an abrasive strip. Uh, the second group uh, uh, of teeth were reduced with a uh, diamond disc. The third one uh, was reduced uh, uh, with a uh, uh, diamond bore. The fourth one uh, um, were reduced with an uh, erbium chromium uh, ISGG laser. And the uh, uh, fifth one were uh, intact enamel for uh, control. Um, the materials. Uh, uh, used, uh, as I said, uh, an uh, abrasive strip, uh, a diamond disc, a diamond bore, and uh, the laser. Uh, the stripping of uh, dental samples. And the um, preparation of uh, the samples. Uh, they were uh, um, sectioned in uh, approximate uh, halves. Uh, then uh, it followed uh, chemical fixation with 4% uh, uh, formalin solution. Um, uh, then uh, serial uh, dehydration in uh, ethyl alcohol. And uh, the last uh, step was drying. And the preparation for the SEM uh, analysis. Um, the samples were uh, fixed with uh, uh, carbon, uh, carbon um, two-sided type tape, um, and then uh, a layer of uh, uh, 20 nanometers of uh, gold was uh, deposited from uh, plasma uh, on the top uh, in order to ensure a continuous uh, uh, conductive layer, and. Uh, a silver paste contact was uh, deposited uh, on top of the golden layer. Um, the um, equipment uh, used uh, for uh, uh, the uh, plasma sputtering and for the SEM uh, analysis. Um, then uh, the samples uh, were uh, uh, analyzed uh, by uh, uh, SEM. The first one, uh, the first uh, samples reduced by uh, the abrasive strip um, were characterized by uh, non parallel uh, grooves with uh, enamel uh, ridges. Um, 
the surface reduced with the, the diamond disc uh, are uh, more regular, uh, presented by uh, parallel uh, uh, lines with uh, minor grooves and uh, uh, reduced uh, debris of uh, the remaining uh, enamel. The third, uh, um, the third group of samples reduced with the diamond bore uh, present uh, an uh, irregular area with uh, deeper, uh, larger, uh, um, larger uh, groups and uh, persistence of enamel debris. Um, the fourth uh, group of uh, samples uh, reduced with the erbium chromium IESGG uh, laser are uh, uh, irregular, honeycombed, uh, and uh, um, there are some crater formation. And the intact uh, enamel uh, is almost smooth, and some uh, groups are uh, uh, some irregular, ir irregularities are uh, uh, present by uh, uh, wearing or thermal, chemical, mechanical uh, uh, processes. Uh, so, uh, uh, the main problem is uh, uh, um, determining which uh, methods uh, uh, which method is uh, better, the mechanical uh, stripping or the manual methods. And from our ACM analysis, we, uh, um, we saw that uh, um, the smoothest area was achieved by the diamond disc. Also, the, um, um, the um, Preparation uh, with the laser uh, show uh, uh, rough uh, surfaces uh, and uh, numerous uh, micro cavities. Uh, but uh, one advantage of uh, using the laser for stripping is, uh, is that it uh, prevents uh, demineralization of the uh, teeth. Uh, some recommendation for uh, uh, these uh, methods, um, an appropriate uh, enamel finishing method must uh, be performed. Um, and um, in vivo future studies uh, uh, must be performed as well to see the, um, the response of the um, patient. And in conclusion, uh, the areas of the teeth processed uh, with uh, the diamond burst were the roughest, followed by the abrasive diamond uh, strips. Uh, we saw that uh, the smoothest uh, um, area was uh, uh, achieved uh, by stripping uh, um, with uh, the diamond disc. And uh, the... Um, mm, uh, modern optical uh, laser uh, methods are not so uh, um, are not so effective in this study because they show uh, high porosity and uh, this is unacceptable from a bioclinical perspective. Uh, but the uh, advantages of uh, using uh, uh, lasers uh, in uh, orthodontics is uh, because it shows uh, it has antimicrobial effects and uh, it prevents uh, the demineralization. And uh, also uh, properly finishing the enamel surfaces that uh, undergo uh, uh, stripping is, uh, is also an important uh, uh, point. Uh, thank you for uh, your attention. So uh, this is uh, the result uh, of an ancient uh, and uh, much older research of Mr. Tulika. It dates uh, of about two years. And it is about uh, how to design and construct uh, a non-expensive radiation identification, uh, identification device. 
that could be used also in uh, in Israel environment and also uh, it can indicate in real time uh, the large variation in ionization uh, in radiation. Uh, generally, radiological dosimetry refers to methods uh, to quantificate uh, the, uh, the energy stored in a given environment by direct or indirect uh, ionizing radiation. There are a lot of um, de devices uh, measuring this radiation in these moments, uh, and they are of different types, like ionization chambers, proportional matter, and J meters, like this. Uh, on, um, they mentioned these three categories of devices used. Uh, what uh, they built is a device based on a um, sensor in uh, connection with a development board, Arduino Uno, and uh, also like this one in the figure, and the de detector uh, of radiation is uh, presented in the lower image. Uh, it contains a terminal block, a slide switch, a toner trimmer, uh, a base for installing, number four, uh, the processor, a LED tube, a buzzer, also a uh, radial inductor, a sensor, which is the most important, the pins for connecting with the boat, and also an electrolytic capacitor. This is a structure of the radiation detector compatible, compatible with Arduino Uno. Uh, they need all this, uh, these two, component and also uh, auxiliary uh, elements like wires uh, and ca communication cable and also a uh, computer. And the, in the first part, uh, they connected the components of detector to the Arduino board. And uh, then they uh, tried to, of course, so they made the connection with the pins of the development board. And also what was the most important step after uh, constructing this uh, device, a very simple and uh, cheap device, non-expensive, I think it's better. They calibrated the device using an, uh, a source of americium, which is also found in the <coughs> plutonium, like a part of radioactive uh, element. Uh, for this, uh, this uh, step of calibration, uh, they used a um, dispositive or a device gamard, which is presented here, a dosimeter, and um, they found uh, a very good uh, um, accordance between the value measured by the uh, gamard and also by their uh, dosimeter made uh, based on the uh, Arduino board. Of course, uh, Arduino board, I, I should like to, to go back. The Arduino board and the uh, sensor, the used sensor, are very cheap and uh, they have also um, a software which is uh, free access 
in the same time being assisted by a laptop, uh, they have uh, uh, a recording of all that data in the real time. This cons uh, gives to the device a very friendly interface uh, by the um, by computer. In conclusion, the device used to identify and measure radiation in this dosimeter uh, can be made which can be made as a very low cost device. And uh, in, uh, is a, uh, in addition, uh, it can emit uh, an audible signal when the radiation level uh, is higher than uh, safety than a safety uh, dose, dose. Thank you, and excuse me, please, because I'm not the main author. Thank you very much. So we are using this sort of devices in our mechanical engineering, uh, medical engineering uh, department uh, in Transylvania University. And uh, the paper is dedicated to show uh, the differences and the performances of different devices uh, or installation maybe, because they are more complicated. Uh, between uh, of this uh, equipment. Uh, generally, uh, when we are speaking about uh, human locomotory, we are speaking about, uh, first of all, coordinates, planes, and axes that are well known by everybody. Also, we are speaking about different type of movements uh, specific for the biomechanics, uh, flexion, extension, rotation, abduction, adduction, uh, circumduction, to, uh, every sort of rotation around uh, some axis uh, specific to biomechanics. Uh, in the paper are analyzed three categories of plate of de uh, devices. First of all, the first one, which is analyzed from the point of view or its performance, is the Kistler plate. It is a plate uh, uh, that uh, are, which is provided with four piezoelectric uh, sensors placed on its corner, and it can measure forces on a, a Cartesian base, all components of the reaction or the, by, this by these sensors. Of course, uh, by piezoelectric effect, uh, knowing uh, the, the forces of, in contact of the human foot with the plate, and uh, uh, using the software, which is uh, quite uh, complicated of this uh, foot scan, um, we know also the moments in the point of contact, uh, in the in different point of the plate. In, um, of course, uh, these uh, forces are obtained through a piezoelectric effect. I shall not uh, um, explain now, because uh, I think uh, everybody knows it. Uh, the measurements are fe um, done in real time and can be used uh, to calculate different 
uh, by, by values of forces, also the variation of these forces uh, concerning principally the stability of the position of the sharp subject on the, uh, on the plate. The second uh, device analyzed is a foot scan. Uh, generally, it, uh, it uh, works uh, measuring plantar pressure uh, and use a sensitive resistive matrix with sensors uh, that scan sequentially. The system records pressure data uh, during uh, the subject is standing or moving on the on the uh, plate, the plate can have uh, just till to two meters length, so it is uh, enough space to perform some steps on the on the plate. The color of the image. This is the uh, uh, image uh, obtained. Uh, through the software of the assisting the foot scan uh, and uh, the, it uh, through the same soft uh, are calculated uh, different values of pressure uh, especially uh, of the feet on the plate uh, it is uh, the board is connected directly on a new CB USB to uh, computer, and uh, of course the data are registered, are recorded, and also um, treated as to obtain different uh, variation of forces on different directions. Also in a Cartesian uh, base, and uh, also um, on the three three, three direction. Uh, X, Y, and Z. The third uh, system X is uh, X sense. It is uh, the last. Uh, it is the most uh, modern design. It's a initial uh, dynamic measurement of the whole body. It can be performed through a uh, sweet Likra type, like here, or it can uh, work uh, on belts they are fixed mounted on different parts of the co the body on the legs or on the arms that depends on the uh, specificity of the experimentation uh, that are making uh, all these uh, sensors mounted uh, on Swedlikra or on the um, belt, identify the movement of the human body. The locomotion is uh, uh, recorded, uh, showing the data uh, for every sensor pre present on the human body parts and also it can uh, and it uh, will uh, it, it is possible to identify uh, the real time variation of these forces and moments in the last part of the paper it was made a multi criteria analysis for these three types of devices of devices in order to uh, make evident their performances and uh, their possibilities to be used in experimental uh, um, biomechanical experimental. The, the chosen uh, criteria are reliability, accuracy, the, the interface of the results, that uh, it is uh, about the software assisting everyone, every one of these devices. The space of measurements, the difficulty of using them, and after that, uh, we made, they made a total score.
the quantification is uh, zero if the criterion is not valid for the respective device. Uh, a half is a criterion if the criterion is valid but not in full, and one is accorded if the fully uh, if the criterion is fully valid. We can observe here that the essence is uh, the most uh, appropriate for studying uh, the human body movement, and uh, the less is is a Kistler place. <coughs> This large plate is also uh, is uh, see such low uh, uh, plate because it is a, a static analyze of the of the body and uh, not in dynamic. But in comparison with foot scan and it says that a low and dynamic analyze. That uh, and also it uh, presents only few medical, few, few bio biomechanical uh, parameters can, that can be uh, analyzed. In conclusion, um, we can uh, we can say that uh, bi biomechanical analysis of the human body can be performed with different mechatronic devices by various methods and uh, they use uh, generally this device use generally uh, pressure sensors uh, sen sensors for, for forces video cameras and uh, they can all of them they can record biomedical parameters at high precision both all of them are a very good uh, a very good uh, accuracy. So we can uh, also they have very strong software, but uh, the, from the point of view of the me space measurement, most uh, the best is X sense, and also for its reliability, it is uh, far from the, the the other two devices. And thank you, and excuse me for my... It's a great honor for me to have this presentation. And in the uh, next uh, 15 minutes, uh, I will present minimally invasive, fully implantable left ventricular assist device, concept design and early prototyping by Alexandru Pleșoianu, Carmen Pleșoianu, Andrei Țăruș, and Grigore Tinica from University of Medicine and Pharmacy and Institute of Cardiovascular Disease from Yash, Romania. We have no conflict of interest and this is our agenda. Yeah, uh, this year, the new guideline for heart failure was launched by European Society of Cardiology that defines the advanced heart failure as persistent symptoms despite maximum guideline directed therapy. Uh, unfortunately, the prevalence of this pathology is continuously rising and one year mortality can reach up to 75% at one year. The present heart failure guideline details the seven clinical profiles for advanced heart failure patients according with interagency for mechanical circulatory support. Very useful for setting the right time to address heart failure patients to mechanical circulatory support therapy. Up to 10% from the overall heart failure population who remains severely symptomatic despite optimal guideline directed management from which cardiac transplantation or mechanical circulatory support are last standing resource. Because of limited availability of heart transplants, which is the gold standard, the mechanical circulatory support has come into the spotlight with evidence associating it with increased survival and quality of life in very fragile population. In the evolution of mechanical circulatory support, continuous flow rotary pumps proved that may successive, suc successfully replace the pulsatile ones which were initially used. 
commercially available left ventricular assist device with continuous axial flow pump are represented by JARG 2000 and Harmay 2, both implanted in human in April, respectively July 2000. Unfortunately, uh, those pump pumps are not uh, very used anymore since uh, there are a lot of uh, complications. Uh, and so important improvements were developed by those uh, companies, um, but severe uh, thrombosis, bleeding or infection still limit their clinical use, uh, justifying interference research to create better ones. So materials and yeah. In a multidisciplinary team consisting of bioengineer, cardiologist, and cardiovascular surgeons, we have made an extensive analysis of literature data and patent da database in the field of mechanical circulatory support. We have identified the main problems associated with this therapy from the perspective of medical team, patient, and also other actors that interact with the device during the, its life cycle. The concept of the device was uh, creating using uh, CSML modeling language in enterprise architect software, taking into consideration the needs of all actors involved in the mechanical circulatory support, patients, healthcare providers, and manufacturers. Mathematical modeling was used to calculate the pump characteristics to deliver five liters per minute at differential pressure of 100 millimeters mercury under the size constraints imposed by minimally invasive implantation of the device in a subcutaneous pocket. The conceptual design of the pump was created using Turbo Machinery Design Software, CF Turbo, and the detailed design of left ventricular assist device, the implant part, was further uh, re uh, refined uh, using uh, SolidWorks software. Um, as a result, in the left side, we can see the use case diagram where the actors were defined and also the use cases that they request or contribute to. In the middle, we have the context diagram where interfaces were defined and what properties are exchanged within those interfaces. And in the right, we have the first layer of, the, of uh, decomposing uh, with the white box of the system. We have created, created a left ventricular assist device for partial support in, for patients with um, New York Heart Association class three, four heart failure that might pump up to five liters per minute of blood from the left side of the heart to the arterial system at a differential pressure of 100 millimeters mercury. The characteristic of device, uh, the actors and the interfaces involved were defined. So the ventricular assist device contains an Im implant and controller, rechargeable batteries, charging station, and the console. Here in the pictures, we can see the implant placed sub subcutaneously, wirelessly receiving the energy from external wearable controller. So the device is designed to be minimally invasive, fully implantable in a subcutaneous pocket in the uh, pectoral area. The inflow cannula is connected uh, to the left atrium, either endovascularly via subclavian vein, superior vena cava, right, right uh, atrium uh, fossa ovalis, uh, or um, by um, uh, surgical endovascularly via sub, uh, subclavian vein. Uh, sorry. Uh, we end with uh, the outflow connected to, um, the, so we endovascularly directly to left atrium and uh, the outflow connected uh, with uh, subclavian artery proximal to the implantation incision. Um, mathematical modeling was performed aiming to calculate the pump characteristic to comply with uh, the size constraints. Dimensional functional calculus uh, of the hollow axial flow pump were made. 
from the requested pressure work of 100 millimeters mercury and blood density, we calculated the specific work. Um, and uh, we, for impeller diameter, uh, for example, the impeller diameter of 10 millimeters and flow of five liters per minute, we derived the specific uh, diameter. On the cordial diagram, the line of optimal efficiency interval, we identified that uh, for the specific diameter, we obtained the value of specific speed. In the second interval of um, axial uh, pumps, and uh, with the rotational speed of uh, 40,580 uh, rotations per minute and the specific speed of 0 0.7, we are in a high efficiency area, slightly over 90% uh, efficiency. For the pump's diameter of 12 millimeters, the same calculus showed that uh, 8,340 rotations per minute must uh, to be applied uh, to pump five liters per minute at 100 mercury millimeters mercury. Okay. The conceptual design of the pump was creating using turbo machinery design software, CF Turbo. Firstly, we defined the fluid properties and uh, the design operation uh, point of the pump in terms of total pressure uh flow rate and the rotation speed calculated before we consider the blood density at uh, uh, 1060 kilograms per uh, um, cubic meter and uh, the um, design operational point was set to 100 millimeters mercury with a flow of five liters per minute the result um, was shown in the left figure for a design operational point. And the uh, pump, pump inner part consisting of an inducer, impeller, and diffuser in the right side of the picture was calculated at 30 millimeter length and 10 millimeters diameter. The inducer is an inlet stator with uh, three blades parallel with pump's axis for di directing the blood flow. The impeller is a three-blade helical rotor with a wrap angle of 235 degrees and 225 degrees at hub and shroud sections of the pump respectively that transform rotational movement into hydrodynamic energy. The diffuser contains three blades that contribute to the axial flow of blood and improve efficiency. The implant consists of electric motor, an axial flow pump, an electronic circuit, a rechargeable battery, and the housing. The motor of the device is an elect uh, electric brushless uh, DC motor composed by stator, rotor, and magnetic bearings. Specific to this motor are the coreless windings of the stator, the tubular magnetic rotor, and magnetic bearings. The rotor is a two-layer tube the inner one with structural and shielding roll and the outer one with rotational and bearing roll. The tubular shape of the rotor allows the construction of the pump inside of it. The magnetic bearings consist of two components, the inner component attached to the exterior of the rotor and the outer component attached to the housing. The magnetic bearing keeps the rotor suspended, suspended inside the stator, allowing the stabilization um, of the bearing. Another force, electromagnetic or hydrodynamic anyway, have to be involved. The pump contains an impeller embedded inside the rotor, an inducer and diffuser. Inside the pump, the blood does not encounter areas of significant occlusion, turbulence, or strong electromagnetic field. The surface, uh, surface of the pump uh, and the uh, motor may be covered with uh, amorphous tetraedral carbon. The electronic system uh, contains a power management uh, block, a microcontroller, a motor driver, and a communication block. The energy wirelessly transmitted from an external source is received through the antenna and distributed to the power management block both devices operation and battery charging, which is used as internal power source when external sources interrupted. 
Um, yeah, as results for materialization, the design of the pump created in, okay, uh, I have a small delay. So the design of the pump created in CF Turbo was used as input geometry for detailed design of the system in SolidWorks. And from here, uh, several variants of the housing geometry were created and 3D printed with fused filament fabrication technique. The solid models were examined and uh, we choose uh, one that was materialized with a clear resin stereo lithography technique at 25 microns uh, resolution. Okay, discussions. We presented a circulatory assist device characterized by minimally invasive implantation, pumping blood parallel to the heart through a pump will build inside the rotor of a brushless electric motor with magnetic bearings powered by electronic circuit, which wirelessly received energy from an extra corporeal source. Internal rechargeable battery ensures autonomy in operation when the external source is interrupted. The pump's rotor assembly levitates magnetically inside the stator. All surfaces in contact with blood may be covered with amorphous tetraedral carbon. There are several features of the proposed device that have the potential to minimize the complication associated with the market available devices. The main blood pad does not cross the space between stator and rotor. The magnetic bearings allowing the reliability and reduce the risk of cell damage. The amorphous tetraedral carbon coating reduces the risk of rejection and reduces friction between blood and the uh, pump surfaces. The autonomous function, uh, functionality provided by internal battery contributes to the increasing of patient's quality of life and the uh, wireless energy reception reduces the risk of infections that accompanies the um, penetration of patient skin by electrodes or tubes common to many devices. Further investigation anyway must be performed to confirm the mathematical calculus of the pump by computer, compute, computed fluid dynamics and in vitro testing. Furthermore, the concerns regarding stabilization of the bearing system and the risk associated with transcutaneous energy transmission must be addressed. So in uh, conclusion, in a multidisciplinary team, we have created an innovative, fully minimally invasive implantable left ventricular assist device capable to deliver five liters per minute of blood at 100 millimeters mercury differential pressure using 12 millimeter internal diameter um, axial flow pump turned at 8,340 rotations per minute. Also, our work was recognized by um, the uh, Romanian pat patent organization. And um, we have also other uh, applications for uh, patent uh, granting. So thank you very much for attention. And uh, if there are questions. Thank you for the presentation. Interesting and complex work. Any questions from the audience? No. No questions. No questions. No. Uh, when uh, it will be done? Yeah, we we are now in. Uh um proof of concept stage so we uh we uh, we are ready to, to uh, finish the uh, in vitro testing in the this year in the end of this year and uh, uh, the next step will be after we pass this testing uh next year to have the uh, in vivo testing so in July 2022, uh, I expect that we will have uh, our first implant in uh, animal. Okay.
we'll wait your uh, conclusions. Yeah.